Coming up on Hands on iOS, we are moving on to automations. That is the true power of the smart home. When you don't have to push any buttons, you don't have to talk to Siri, you don't have to worry about any of it because your smart home works for you. So let's dig in. Hands on iOS is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy with one click. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash HOI. So you learned how to use the home app for iOS. You've learned about how to set up scenes. You've learned about adding accessories. Now it's time for automations. Let's pop right into this. We will tap on the automations tab and let's talk about what these do. Well, as you can see at the top, iOS gives you a little bit of a hint. You can have your accessories react to changes at home. That means that your smart home is doing things on its own. It means you're not having to go in and say, oh, I wanna adjust this light and I wanna bring this up. No, none of that. This is going to do the things that you want it to do when you want it to do it without having to press any buttons. So how do we add a new automation? Well, it's very simple. Just like adding a new scene, we tap the plus button in the top right corner and you can see these are the different type of automation categories that are available. There's people arrive and people leave. These are location-based automations. So you can choose to have lights or locks or different devices react depending on whether you are arriving at your home or are leaving your home. And if you have multiple people in your smart home, I showed you in an earlier video how to add someone to your smart home and what that involves, then you can make decisions based on if it's the first person to arrive home, if it's the last person to leave home, if a specific person arrives home. There are all of these little nice details that you can adjust so you get everything just right. Then we've got a time of day automation. This is of course based on times. Now it is as specific as actual specific times, so 8 a.m. or 9 p.m., but you can also set them, and one that I often use is sunset and sunrise. So it uses your location to determine when the sun is setting and rising in your given location, and then can make automations happen based on that. An example would be that I would have my porch lights and my backyard lights turn on at sunset, and then when the sun rises in the morning, they would turn off. Next is when an accessory is controlled. So you might have a light in your house that when it turns on, this is an example, if it's in your garage. So when the light in my garage turns on, I want these other lights in my garage to turn on so you can have everything light up at once. And when the light in my garage turns off, then I want those other lights in my garage to turn off. It's a way to control multiple accessories using just one accessory at a given time. And then when a sensor detects something. So you might have motion sensors in your house, you might have air quality sensors, you may have smoke detectors, all sorts of sensors can actually be used and taken advantage of to control different smart home accessories. So you might have an air quality sensor and when the air drops below a certain level, then I want the smart plug that is controlling my air purifier to turn on, thereby triggering the air, pur air purifier itself to turn on. So let's hop into one of these automations. We'll start with a location-based automation. I'll tap on people arrive, and you can see when anyone arrives or when the first person arrives. So think about this. There may be a case where you get home and you want the lights to turn on in your house. But then as you're there, you know, you're, you're Netflixing, you're, you're doing whatever, and you get the lights set just as you want. Well, if you have this automation set for when anyone arrives home and then your partner happens to arrive home, those lights are gonna get reset to the value that you have set for this automation. So you may wanna change that from anyone arrives to the first person arrives. Now, do you see this little information icon next to anyone arrives? As I mentioned before, you can get very nitty gritty with this. So I'm gonna tap on this and you can see 
that I can choose between who I want this uh, automation to trigger for. So it may be that when I arrive home, I want something to change. And then when my partner arrives home, I don't want this automation to take place. So by tapping on that I and choosing a check mark, you can determine just exactly who you want to have this automation trigger. Then I can tap that icon to collapse it again. The location, well, in this case, I want it to be when anyone arrives at my home, do this thing. But I can set any location to be the location that I want to adjust. So I could set it for Twit Eastside Studio. And then I can adjust the bubble, essentially, the GPS bubble that exists around the space so that when I get, oh, to Old Redwood Highway right around Twit Studio, that's when this automation should, should trigger. I tap done and you can see this little notification here. It says, okay, look, you're setting this automation up based on your device. So it's not going to be concerned about what other people do. It is only using your device's location to determine this automation. I tap continue and then now it says, when I arrive at Twit Eastside Studio, at any time, I can go ahead and adjust this. And when I arrive at the studios during the day, when I arrive at the studios at night, so of course this is using sunset and sunrise, or at a specific time, uh, that is when I want this automation to trigger. So I've set this up when I arrive at Twit Eastside Studio at any time, then these are the scenes that I have. And again, these first ones are for the, um, for, for my canvas, my NanoLeaf canvas panels. These all have very silly names like Netflix and Chill, for example, uh, that different people who make NanoLeaf canvas panel scenes name. And I can choose from those scenes or I can choose specific accessories. So maybe it's the case that I always leave on the living room lights and I don't want to, if I were to go to the store really quick, then I don't want those lights to be messed with because I'm gonna be back. But if I'm going to work, then I'm gonna be there most of the day, well, at least outside of the situation now. And so in that case, yes, I do want the lights in the house to turn off. So that is where you can get specific to locations other than your home. But most of the time, we'll go back, it's when I arrive at my home that I would want to do uh, a specific automation. So when I arrive at home, at night, we'll set up a very specific automation here. And you can see, if I tap this little information button, you can choose what night means. So in this case, between sunset and sunrise, that is night, or 15 minutes before sunset. So I would choose, say, 30 minutes before sunset. Then I want you to turn on the canvas light in my living room and the floor lamp in my living room, as well as the stairs, the entryway light in my stairway. Then I tap next, and then I will set these to full brightness. I'll give it a nice bright color. And this is just an on off switch you can see, so I don't have to make uh, individual adjustments there. Then this is really nice as well. This is the turn off function. And so what this does is it lets you say, do this automation, but then after a certain period of time, go ahead and turn off those lights uh, or, or switches or whatever it is that you've, in, you've included. So then I could say, well, no, I want these lights to stay on. I'll make adjustments after that. And then I would tap done. At that point, the accessory is in place. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by ExpressVPN. VPNs protect your privacy and security online and can take your TV watching to the next level by unlocking movies and shows only available in other countries. With so many of us stuck at home, it's only a matter of time until you run out of stuff to watch. You can use ExpressVPN to binge watch Star Trek on the UK Netflix, change your location, and refresh. Protect yourself with a VPN I use and trust. Visit ExpressVPN.com slash HOI and get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com slash HOI. expressvpn.com slash HOI. So that's an example of one automation you can set up, but let me show you a real-world example, one that I actually have set up for my home. So you can see here in my automation tab, 
it shows when the first person arrives home, do something with stairs. Let's tap into that so you can see exactly the details. Now, this automation is enabled, so you can, say you set up a really complex automation and you maybe don't wanna use it for a period of time, but you do want to keep it, well, you can easily enable or disable the automation without actually having to delete it. But this is set so that when the first person arrives home, so my partner is included in my home kit home, regardless of whether I am home or he's visiting and is there, it's the first person to arrive at home, that's when this automation triggers. I want you to turn on the lights in the entryway. So my house is uh, three floors and the bottom floor is the garage and the entryway and you walk up the stairs to the main living space. So there's a stairwell that has lights along the stairs and I have that set up so that it's, it's connected to a smart switch on my wall. Well, when I come in from the garage, I wanna be able to see as I'm going up the stairs. So this automation goes ahead and turns on that light in the hallway and then lets me walk up the stairs. And as I mentioned, this is one of those times where the turn off automation is great. I don't need those stairway lights on all the time. So I can just say, after three minutes of me arriving home and you turning on the light, go ahead and turn those lights off. Now, a little pro tip here. Uh, this is an adjustment that I'm going to make right now because I've been having the issue where I'll spend a little bit of time out in the garage spraying down the groceries or what it ha whatever it happens to be before I come inside. So then the lights are off by the time I get in. So luckily I can tap on that turn off thing and I can adjust it to say 10 minutes. Then I'll tap done and it adds that automation to my home. Let's tap that plus button again so I can talk a little bit about the other ones here. Uh, the time of day automations are pretty easy to understand. At 8 a.m., I want you to turn on the lights in my living room. At sunset, I want you to turn on the lights outside. Let's talk about when an accessory is controlled, though. So I'll tap into that, and let's say that, and I don't have one in this case, but if I were to have a lock on my front door, this is a great example of a way that I used to have an automation set up. It would, when the lock on my front door would be controlled, turn on the light in the hallway, the entryway. So that was an easy way to say, okay, I don't need that light in the hallway or the entryway to turn on in any other case, but if someone's coming in through the front door, then go ahead and turn that on. And that is another thing to point out that you don't necessarily have to use one type of automation to do a control. Because I have a smart garage door opener, for example, I could choose to, when my garage door opens, so I've tapped on garage, I'll tap next. When it opens, and again, I can choose at any time, I can choose people, so when nobody is home, and the garage door opens, and uh, yeah, when nobody is home and the garage door opens, then turn on this specific scene or this specific device. So that would be another way for me to turn on the entryway light as opposed to using my location. So that's one example there. Now let's talk about the last one, when a sensor detects something. This is a big one. Uh, for example, if you have a HomeKit enabled smoke detector in your home, it may be the case that along with that smoke detector blaring, you also want all of the lights in your home to turn on. So you can definitely be, if it's in the middle of the night or something like that, you can be woken up from your sleep and know something's going on. But in my case, I have different motion detectors in different areas of my home. So I might wanna say that when the motion detector in the living room detects motion, then go ahead and you can see again, here it shows when it detects motion or when it stops detecting motion after a certain period of time. At any time and with specific people or with, you know, if you don't want to use the people filter, then you don't have to. Uh, so I'm not going to time any. Uh, next, then go ahead and control X, Y, or Z. So if motion is detected in my living room, then turn on a specific light in my living room or turn on the fan. Or when there's no motion or occupancy detected anymore, then go ahead and turn off the lights. You can see how quickly these become very powerful and how there are so many different options for you based on whatever it is you want to do to control your home. So automations, are a way to make your smart home work for you, to make these things happen automatically without you having to think about anything at all. And as you can see, 
There are so many ways to delve into the very nitty gritty details of specific times or when I'm home, when somebody else is home, when everyone's out of the house and everything in between to really get those automations that you want. So I recommend going in, kind of playing around with those a little bit and seeing which automations work the best for you. And that is why it's a good idea to make sure that if you are a multi-home family and you all have iOS devices, to add your, add your family to your home. As I showed in the first video, you can control individually the, the abilities that an individual who's been added to your smart home has uh, control over. So you can say, yes, I want them in my home, but I don't want them to be able to control accessories while they're outside of it, etc. And that will make sure that you can do these location-based automations or uh, these person-based automations regardless of whether uh, you want to use some of the other means of controlling them as a location as an example. So automations, man, it gets really detailed, but they're so powerful and they can let you sit back and relax while you let that smart home that you pay for do all the work for you. Thank you so much for tuning in for a, another look at the Home app, and in this case, specifically automations. I do appreciate you uh, taking the time. Of course, if you haven't yet, head to twit.tv slash H-O-I. That is where you can subscribe to the show in its many different formats. It's very important that you subscribe and get the show delivered right to you when it's available. And if you're into YouTube, youtube.com slash hands on iOS will give you a way to subscribe and you know like and comment and all that stuff in between. I do appreciate you coming in, checking out Hands on iOS, and I can't wait to continue to show you how to get the most out of your iOS devices.